Affinity Publisher has a feature called Studio Link. When you also have Affinity Designer and or Photo installed and activated on the same machine, you can move into these Designer and Photo Personas at the top here. Switching into the Photo Persona gives us access to all of the main image editing functionality of Affinity Photo, including live filter layers. This means you can apply effects such as blurring, sharpening, perspective correction and more non-destructively to images and other resources within your publication. I'll show you a quick example here on this image. First, I need to make sure my layer stack on the right updates to reflect the current page I am on. Now, rather than switch back to the publisher persona to access the pages panel and double click on a page or a spread, a quick tip is to switch to the move tool using V, then select a layer on the current page. So with this picture frame selected, I'll go to layer, new live filter layer, blur, depth of field. On the filter dialog, I'll check preserve alpha, then change the mode to tilt shift. I can then drag the radius slider up and click drag on the nodes to reposition and scale the tilt shift effect. I can close the dialog and expand the picture frame to see the depth of field blur filter layer. Hiding this layer will remove the effect. Then I can show it again to bring the effect back. Clicking the filter icon will allow me to bring the dialog back up and configure the parameters at any time. I could experiment with bringing the vibrance slider up, for example, and then perhaps also moving the nodes around. Then I can also use the escape key to close the dialog. I'll show you another example that involves masking. On the front page, I'll select the picture frame and then I'll add a live clarity filter. I can bring the strength all the way up to enhance structure within the image, but this does look too strong on the sky area. What I can do now is switch to the paintbrush tool, which will let me mask the effect away from the sky. On the context toolbar, I'll reduce the hardness to zero, then I'll increase the brush width, and to paint away from a mask, the color needs to be set to black or no fill, which can be configured on the tools panel here if required, or up here on the color panel. My default is already pure black, however, so I am ready to begin painting away from the sky area. You can see the structural enhancement effect disappears as I do so. Layer isolation is available in all the Affinity apps. So I can expand the picture frame here. Then I can option click on Mac, alt click on Windows over the mask thumbnail to see the mask as a grayscale representation. I can see I've missed some areas up here. So I'll just paint into them. Then I can exit isolation mode by clicking onto another layer or by using the same option or alt click technique on the thumbnail again. Now I'll use H to switch to the view tool. This is a useful tool for panning since you can avoid accidentally moving or manipulating layers. On the second page, I might want to distort the perspective of this image. I'll use V to switch to the move tool, then select this image on the page. If we were to apply a live perspective filter to the picture frame, however, this would just transform the entire image container. Instead, I'll delete that perspective filter, then I'll expand the picture frame and specifically select the office blocks image layer on the layers panel here, rather than its parent picture frame. Now I can add the live perspective filter and this time I am free to manipulate the nodes whilst the image bounds stay the same. Like any other live filter, this is simply a layer. So I can hide it, show it again, and even click the icon to go back in and modify the perspective transform if I need to. Finally, 
I'll move down to this page and select this image, which has been cropped using a rectangle layer. I'll add a live Gaussian blur, check preserve alpha, then bring the radius up to a high value. I can then change the blend mode to an option such as hard light. This produces a nice diffuse glow effect, but at the moment it's too strong across the entire tonal range of the image. With the Gaussian blur layer selected, I can click the cog icon here to access the blend options. Now all I need to do is drag the left hand node down on the source layer ranges graph and bring it across slightly. This blends the Gaussian blur effect away from the darker areas of the image, which means we end up with a nice glow effect just being applied to the brighter areas. Again, I can hide this layer so you can see the before, then show it again so you can see the after. And that was a quick overview of using live filters in Affinity Publisher by switching to the Photo Persona. This opens up some huge workflow possibilities since you can experiment directly with filters non-destructively when working on your publications. There is no need to switch over to Affinity Photo, apply some filters, then possibly save multiple copies of the same document or image so that you can audition different ideas. Instead, you can apply as many ideas as you want non-destructively on your publication. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching.